In this video, we're going to talk about timeline-based animation. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make YouTube videos about e-learning, specifically Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing, please subscribe to my channel, make sure you turn on notifications, like this video, and certainly share it with all of your e-learning buddies. So I've been thinking a little bit about animation lately, and I thought, you know, hey, I don't have a video about that on the all new Adobe Captivate. So here it is. I'm going to show you a few things that you can do to punch up your e-learning course and make it a little bit more dynamic and engaging. Let's get started. Okay, here's a slide I've created for the company travel policy e-learning course. And it's fine, it's pretty static, you know, nothing's really happening here. So one of the things that you might wanna do is add a little animation, which, you know, certainly those in the PowerPoint world have gotten used to. So let's do a few things here to, uh, to bump this up and, and we'll learn something about timeline animation as we go here. So what I like to do is have my timeline open anytime I'm working on animation, because a lot of the animation is gonna be based on certain things happening in the narration. Uh, for starters though, let's take a look at the title of this slide and our image of this person with their passport and their planning to visit the world. So we can do some animation initially for, for objects like this. And it's important to note there are some differences between text animation and image animation. So when I apply animation to the text here, I will get a whole different set of options. So let's select the text animation for starters here. We'll click on the animation icon in our right hand toolbar to open up the properties inspector for animation. And you can see that there are three different types of animation. We'll get into that with a little bit more detail later on, but for right now, let's focus on the entrance animation. So there are uh, a lot of similarities between uh, images and text animation, but there are some unique things for text. So for example, you could choose a typewriter animation, which is kind of fun. You'll notice that for each of these animations, there are a set of options and settings. And you might think those are kind of one and the same, but they're, they're different in this case here. Options are for things like, you know, changing the direction of an animation or having random letters appear, which we could do. Um, do you want the text delivery to be all together or by word or by line? You can do things like that. So you can really customize the appearance of the animation. Settings is specific to the timing of your animation. So first of all, you can choose the duration of an animation. It can be one of these defaults here, or you can select custom and just type in a value that you wish to use. You can also delay an animation. I don't see a lot of sense in doing that on an entrance animation because of course you could simply delay the object's appearance on the timeline here. Um, but I don't spend a lot of time on this here. Um, the only thing I usually look at is the acceleration and often I'll change it to the ease in effect, which I kind of prefer myself here. But with the animation, of course, you can adjust that delay by just grabbing the animation on the timeline or the duration just by dragging the end and adjusting it accordingly. So you really have that control very visually on the timeline. So I don't worry too much about the settings section here. Once you're done, of course, you can test the, an the animation, see how it looks as many times as you wish. I like that, it looks good. The other thing we're gonna do now, of course, is the image animation. So what can we do with this image here? Well, there's a lot of options that you can do. Um, slide in is probably my personal favorite. And in this case here, I think I'm gonna want it to come from the right-hand side of my slide. You can also add a scale effect where it appears to grow as it animates in. And we can blur the image as it's coming in. It's a subtle effect, but there is a bit of a difference there. And uh, again, we can adjust the timing for this. So in this case here, it might make sense to have the image appear after the typing text. So I can just grab the image itself and move it accordingly here. And we'll just keep the timing and everything else the same. 
Lastly, we've got this item here. What's below are the key points of the company travel policy. So we could do something maybe a little more subtle this time here. And we'll just do an expand option. And that looks kind of cool there. So there, there's some neat things you can do that are unique for text. There are some neat things you can do that are unique for images. Um, and you know you can really help to make that animation look good here. So let's preview this so far. Not much has happened here, but let's do a quick preview so we can see what this looks like. In this lesson, we are going to discuss the company travel policy. The key points covered are booking procedures, expense reimbursement. Okay, so that looks pretty good here. One of the things I've already done and you just started to see the beginning of it is these key points that we're going to talk about in this particular lesson here. So if I uh, increase that timeline a little bit more and maybe we'll zoom in a bit so we can see more of what's going on on the timeline here. If you select these objects, you can see I've delayed their appearance to be in time with the narration as it's occurring there. I haven't added any effects but I think you'll agree that you know doing some effects here will be beneficial. So starting with the booking procedures, let's do, um, again, something more subtle. I think you could go crazy and do all kinds of crazy things, but let's just do a simple slide in, and I'm gonna have it come from the right-hand side here. Uh, again, we can do the scale and blur effect, and I think that's, that's fine the way it is there. Uh, we'll select the next one here and we'll do the same thing. We'll slide in from the right, scale and blur, and travel approvals. We'll go over here to slide in, choose from the right. Again, you could choose different options. I like the more subtle animations because, of course, uh, you can go a little bit crazy and this can become very tiresome for your learners here. I chose the wrong one here. Let's choose slide in from the right, scale and blur. And lastly, our policy violations will also choose the slide in from the right and our two options there. So that looks pretty good. Now, one of the things that you might not be thinking about is that, okay, when this arrives on the slide, we're gonna see a little bit of animation. But the narration in this particular interaction uh, goes on to talk about each of these points here. So we can do something to add emphasis to these objects as they're talked about further. So let's just play a little bit of this and just see when we first hear about, let's say, booking procedures. Let's go down where, so we can see the actual narration. I think it's starting right about there. So if I wanted to add some emphasis, we can select booking procedures, go back to our animation properties inspector, and we'll switch it from entrance, which is what we started with, to emphasis here. And there's quite a few neat little wibble, wibbles and wobbles and jello effects that you can add, bounce effects. I'm partial to the jello. I kind of like that. It just sort of so just do a little wiggle here to give you the emphasis that this is what you should be reading about right now. So let's go ahead and add Jello to that point on the timeline here. Now my playhead is here, and uh, you know we want to be able to move this. So let's just do this. It's so hard to select sometimes. Now you could do a couple of things. You could have the Jello effect go for the duration of that sentence if you wish. I don't think that's necessary. Here's a case where, because I've zoomed in, it's kind of hard to select and resize that. But let's just choose our value right from the panel itself. That's a little bit easier to do. Uh, here's the next sentence. Let's see what's being spoken here. Be sure you keep receipts for all business-related expenses to be reimbursed. So in a case like this, Expense reimbursement, the actual words are being spoken at the end of that sentence. So let's go ahead and add, add that jello effect as well. And we'll go back up here where, where, it's, uh, where the sentence is. So let's say I'm just going to put my playhead at the end of that so I can see where that is. And in this case here, we'll just have that go to the end of the slide here. And I'm just kind of watching my settings there. And we'll just do 
0.5 here. We'll just manually type that in. Maybe I'm zoomed in a little too much here. So I want to be able to grab this. Hard to do when it's zoomed in like that. So there we go. The next thing is travel approvals, which might be almost right away. Let's click on that and go to travel approvals and we'll add uh, again that jello effect. I would be consistent. There are lots of things you certainly can do. And we'll have that start at the beginning of that one. And let's look at safety and security here. We'll add that same jello effect. And we'll just play this and see where we end up. Before you travel, you must obtain approval from your manager using the travel approval form. You are expected to exercise caution and be safe while traveling. So I think the beginning of that sentence is where you can have the jello effect occur there. So let's go back up and just slide that out. And lastly, our policy violations. So let's take a look and we'll add the emphasis there. Well, again, we'll just stick with jello because it's easy. And we'll just take this over and we'll see if we can find the beginning of that next sentence there, which looks like it's right about there. Yeah. Oh, I think I grabbed the wrong one. That's the one we want. Yeah, there we go. And let's just put this back to where it was. There we go. So we also can do an exit effect. And that might be an interesting way to just sort of end the slide. Maybe what we can do, there's sort of the opposite of the typewriter text. We can do that to all the text components there. So let's select company travel policy. We'll go to the exit effect here. And uh, erase is actually the opposite of the typewriter text. And we'll just do that to all of them and just have it, everything kind of disappear here. And I think that might be kind of a cool effect there. Let's do that for each of these here. Now, the nice thing about the exit effect is that that's going to go to the end of the slide because all of these objects appear till the end of the slide. So you'll see those effects right at the end of your timeline there. So let's preview and see how this works. In this lesson, we are going to discuss the company travel policy. The key points covered are booking procedures, expense reimbursement, travel approvals, safety and security, and policy violations. For booking procedures, you must use the company travel booking website. Be sure to keep receipts for all business-related expenses to be reimbursed. Before you travel, you must obtain approval from your manager using the travel approval form. You are expected to exercise caution and be safe while traveling. Our employees are our most important asset. Please remember that policy violations will result in not covering expenses or other disciplinary action. Press the next button to proceed. So, yeah, that was kind of cool. It did a little bit of an animation at the end there. I think my timing was a little bit off, but obviously I did this in just a few minutes where you would spend a bit more time, uh, you know, building this out correctly. But it gives you an idea of what can be done with your Adobe Captivate eLearning project when it comes to animation. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.